Hey, welcome to the Buck Brief. It is Trump versus Lindsey Graham on the abortion issue. Let's let's talk about this. So Trump puts out his uh, position for the election on abortion, and it is that it is a state's uh, issue or an issue that will be left to the states to determine. Now, I have made it clear, I think, that legally, constitutionally, I think that is the correct uh, that is the correct decision. Um, Politically, morally, that's where we can start to have, I think, more of a, of a debate or an argument. But Lindsey Graham, to be clear, uh, says, essentially, um, and you know what, I can actually pull it up for you. Lindsey Graham says that he respectfully disagrees with, uh, with Trump on this issue, uh, and that the pro-life issue was about saving lives, not about geog. Dobbs is not required, this is the actual quote, Dobbs does not require the conclusion legally, and the pro-life movement has always been the well about the well-being of the unborn child, not geography. Um, so what does Lindsey Graham recommend? Uh, if you pass a federal law at 16 weeks, first of all, it shouldn't be a federal law because there's no role for the federal government in, in, in abortion. There should not be. Um, and beyond that, the Democrats then will just, the second that they can, uh, they will change the law to make sure that abortion is effectively what it was under the Roe regime. Uh, but there's no chance in hell of actually getting anything passed uh, anyway. Right. So there, you're going to need 60 votes. You're not going to be able to do it with a bare majority in the Senate. So it's a fool's errand to try to pass this federal legislation. And if the, fed, the federal legislation is not for a national abortion ban, um, that's you know not what's going to certainly that's never going to go through. Um, I, I think Lindsey Graham, for anyone who's paying attention, uh, is a grandstander. I think he grandstands uh, for the cameras. I think that he is more of a Fox News contributor than he is a senator in many ways. Uh, he spends more time going on Fox shows and making promises that he has no intention. Of, of keeping, um, and, you know, he's also a guy who's never seen a war that he didn't want somebody else, uh, somebody else to fight in his, you know, in, in his place. He's not going to go fight any of these wars. So I don't know, obviously have a lot of respect for Lindsey Graham, but I uh, also, on this issue, I don't understand what he thinks. So his, his preferred uh, position would be for President Trump to... Do what exactly? Um, what would the move be? Senator Lindsey Graham introduced the Protecting Pain Capable Unborn Children from Late Term Abortions Act. Legislation would set a federal minimum protection for unborn children 15 weeks. But that legalizes abortion for the first four months. So you're going to pass a federal law. I want everyone to think about this for a second. You're going to pass a federal law that Trump would sign as a Republican, that Republicans would go along with, that abortion for the first four months is okay? That's when a majority of the abortions are occurring anyway, vast majority from what I understand. And that's supposed to be a victory? To pass the federal law? All they'll do is change that federal law and, and they'll start moving how many weeks it is around, but you will effectively have had Republicans declare that abortion most of the time is fine and should be federally protected. That's insane. That is insane. There are some states that have effectively outlawed abortion now. It depends on where you are. Um, and there are others that I think will follow suit in time or will dramatically restrict abortion in real ways just for uh, what Trump says, for example, life of the mother, um, uh, you know, rape, incest, life of the mother, things like that. So, I, I mean, Lindsey Graham, I don't know what he thinks he's accomplishing here, but if you pass a federal law that codifies abortion for all 50 states being legal for the first 16 weeks or 15 weeks of a pregnancy, uh, you're federally codifying abortion. Like, wh wh what is he doing? I mean, the one thing for him to say we should have a federal law banning all abortions, to that I'd say, well, that's a, that's a consistent, a morally uh, consistent and principled position, no doubt, that everybody knows has absolutely zero chance of becoming the law in this country. No chance at all. Okay, so you can't even get 
all the Republicans to go along with that. Um, and, and so the idea that you would be able to get 60 senators, which is what it would require, uh, it's not going to happen. OK, so that's not what he's advocating for to say that you should have you would have if Trump had done what Lindsey Graham wanted and said, yeah, he wants a 15 week uh, uh, abortion ban or the line is at 15 weeks. If Trump had done that, you would have two pro choice presidential candidates to choose from. One just being slightly less pro choice than the other. That's it. There wouldn't even be a pro life candidate, at least with what Trump is saying is, look, I want to advocate for life and for protections for babies uh, as much as possible. It's not a federal issue, but states, he's going to encourage states to be as restrictive as they can be under their state constitutions and with the will of the people represented. Um, th- that's That, to me, is a far better position to be in. You know, what, you know This is the thing. For, for the people that want a maxim, uh, maximalist uh, position on this issue, I want to know what do they want Trump to say. Because if the answer is an abortion ban after 15 weeks, that means that most abortions are fine and legal, and Trump would be signing off on that. Federally, the federal government would be guaranteeing your right to an abortion. It would override states that have outlawed abortions. So this is a horrible idea, a horrible idea in every respect. And, you know, it, it feels a little bit sometimes like the, uh, the pro-life uh, movement, which I've certainly been a supporter of for 20-some-odd years now of my life, and basically as long as I've been an adult, um, as long as I've really thought about politics, uh, I think the pro-life movement is feeling a little caught off guard by just what's happened in some of these states where people have been able to vote uh, on this, and it has not been going our way. But I think, I think Trump has taken the right position on this politically and legally, and for people to say, well, he should have taken the, the right position or the perfect position ethically, politics isn't about what's perfect, unfortunately. You know, you save the lives you can. You know, we would never go to war because we kill innocent people. We'd never go to war if we didn't, re- if we didn't recognize that we would make mistakes and there'd be people who were killed, right? But you do the best you can. You do the best you can. There are trade-offs that have to be made. And, and I think that Trump is making the right trade-off here. That's... Uh, that's at least how I see it, and um, I think it's going to continue to. Oh, it's going to continue to be pretty tense. I think that much is obviously also the case. Um, so, with that, my friends, uh, I'm going to be diving. What what do I have next year? I don't even, Lindsey Graham. Oh, Sonny Hostin is Sonny Hostin the single, uh, the single dumbest person on television. That's a that's a bold thing. That's a big deal to be the dumbest on television. We'll get to that in a second. But, you know, more Americans are buying gold than at any time I can think of. Some are even trying to buy it at big box stores like Costco. This is real. A new Gallup poll has Americans saying purchasing gold is a better investment than stocks and bonds. And no surprise, the price of gold is up by about 13%. The price and value of gold is directly connected to world events and has only grown in value over time. It's one of many reasons why I own gold as part of my financial plan. It holds value over time and it steadily increases. Whether you're contending with regional bank closures in our nation or global instability and conflicts abroad, owning gold will benefit you. I rely on the Oxford Gold Group for my gold and precious metals purchases. Nobody can predict the future, but you can take action today to prepare for it. And that's what owning gold and silver can do for you. Call the Oxford Gold Group right now. You may qualify for up to $10,000 in free precious metals. 833-995-GOLD. 833-995-GOLD. 833-995-GOLD gold uh so here is the view which still has millions of people that watch it i think a couple million people watch it every day um generally the level of conversation is remarkably stupid but here is uh sonny hostin who i think is supposed to be the smart one at the table which is pretty funny um or or among the smarter ones uh, certainly she has a she has a, a law degree it doesn't really say that much about the bar exam, I suppose, but she has a law degree and was a practicing lawyer for a while. So anyway, um, she we had an earthquake recently, and as you know, we had the eclipse. Oh, the eclipse. And here is what she said. 
Leaving, we've got a solar eclipse. Uh, we've she got the earthquake. Down the she ran down the hallway. <laughs> the rapture is here. The rapture is here. And then also, I learned that the cicadas are coming. Cicadas. Cicadas. Oh, for the, the first time <laughs> in cicadas, like cicada. no, 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 no. Two different. No, two, no, well, they, this is what I read. There's two, two different there's times. Two different kinds of cicadas. Yes, two different coming. times. Times are coming. The good cicadas but, and the bad. But for the first time in in many many years. No, every 17 years this happens. Well, that's not what I read, but maybe. But, you know, <laughs> maybe well, you know better. I, but in I a will way, say all those all those things together would maybe lead one to believe that you know either climate change exists That's or something point. is really or going going on. returning. Earthquakes are not at the mercy of climate change. It's underground. No. It can't. I don't it, think it, that's it happens. How and about the, and the, the eclipse. They've known about the eclipse coming because eclipses happen. Now, to think that climate change is somehow the cause of the eclipse. Think about how ignorant and incapable of basic thought processes you'd have to be for that. I mean, but but this isn't just something that should be dismissed out of hand because clearly she wants to make it about something that fits within her, her framework um, for how she approaches everything, which is, oh my gosh, the evil people, I'm a victim, climate change, they're not stopping climate change, it's causing the eclipse. Uh, and ultimately, you can never underestimate the ignorance and the narcissism of these leftist pundit types um, because they really suffer overwhelmingly from a personality, a series of personality disorders. I mean, mental the mental health of the left-wing commentariat is not strong. Uh, that's very obvious if you pay attention to how anxiety and fear rules their lives all the time. But the idea that there is a effect one degree Celsius they may have uh, over the next 50 years or something like that, the climate change folks, one degree Celsius, oh my gosh. Uh, and then that would affect where the sun and the moon are. Because, right, the moon blocks out the sun, that's the eclipse. That is completely insane. Right? How would our climate here affect the trajectory of the moon and the sun. Even Joy Behar has to jump in and be like, hold on a second, you're not that stupid. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. You know, you can't just say these things. Um, she jumps in and she's like, well, that has nothing to do with it. So, I mean, maybe Joy Behar is the smart one at the table. I suppose there's that possibility. But once you understand that climate, uh, the climate cult is very, it is very much a, a cult. I mean, that's not a, I'm not just disparaging them with that term. I'm accurately describing them. They deeply believe in this in a religious sense. And it's brilliant for them because it allows them a narrative where they're the hero, where they're saving the world, where anyone who opposes them is a bad person, and they don't have to do anything. They don't have to do anything. So for a lot of leftists out there, this is a very uh, enticing, very enticing option to believe in this stuff why they'll say things like this because it's about it's a faith-based tradition if you will it's not about science it's not about reason or logic and that's how you can think that climate change affected the eclipse um so here on the podcast i try to cut through the noise the nonsense the ulterior motive so we can uncover the truth that no one else is going to tell you and that's also what my colleague mark chaikin does but he does it for the u.s stock market Mark worked on Wall Street for 50 years, and across those decades, he invented three new indices for the NASDAQ and has predicted some of the biggest market shifts of the past decade, including the recent mania in AI stocks. Mark says the majority of Americans are about to miss out on a critical turning point in this AI frenzy. He's calling this a new dawn for U.S. stocks, and Mark predicts dozens of specific companies will be impacted in just the next 90 days. That's why Mark has agreed to share one of his favorite AI stocks for you to buy now. You put everything you need to know in a new presentation you can watch for free at 2024aistock.com. That's 2024aistock.com. You'll see Mark's favorite AI stocks right now when you go to 2024aistock.com, paid for by Chaikin Analytics. Um, so uh, we got the eclipse over with. What else did I have? Any Anything uh, anything fun to tell you about from the weekend? Um I've been watching The Crown, and I've got to say, it's very good television, 
but they're clear the the showrunners clear uh hostility toward margaret thatcher is just so annoying obviously far left wing politics for the people that are running this cuz the only the only prime ministers think about this the only prime ministers in the crown who are represented in kind of a negative light are Winston Churchill and Margaret Thatcher the complete idiot nincompoop destroy the country's economy socialist eh, buffoons in between although Anthony Eden's conservative you know he gets rough stuff too but of course he's conservative but all the other all the other prime ministers uh that come in between they're treated like they're great oh they're great you know Harold Wilson oh he's great what what it's absurd it's absurd but beyond that forget about the fact that they're they don't really show margaret thatcher in a in a light that i think shows her brilliance and her talent properly um but beside that i think that uh the iron lady was awesome obviously uh the british royal family is is going to be gone in 50 years maybe less they're going to they're going to scale it down but you can't have this story tale, uh, the story time fairy tale, uh, with this this really loathsome uh, twerp, uh, the current King of England, Charles. It, it's it's pathetic. The whole thing is pathetic now. I think it's very obvious to anybody who even briefly investigates it. Plenty of other European countries had monarchies that have kind of faded away into total irrelevance or don't even exist anymore at all. And that's where Britain is, is heading. It's just an anachronism. It's, uh, they were able to ra- uh, ride the wave of celebrity culture in the 20th century a bit, but the whole thing's going to come apart. That's what I think when I'm watching The Crown. And people love to think about this. Oh, it's like a fairy tale. No, not really. They're just a bunch of narcissistic, spoiled brats. It's not really a fairy tale at all. I'm not impressed by any of them. Don't like any of them. I think the whole thing is pretty pathetic. It is a great show, though. Very entertaining. I'll, I'll give you that. Um, more tomorrow team. Thanks for hanging out with me. Please. If you are listening to this, um, subscribe, uh, on YouTube, uh, and also on rumble or whichever one you like to watch videos on. We want to grow those uh, numbers because I do put out video of this and it's a more fun way for me to get to hang out with all of you. So more coming and shields high.